Dale, good to see you. Thank you very much nice for giving up you your time. I know you're on a fleeting visit to uh, to the UK and you've got a lot to sort of pack in. Um, just kind of talk me through what, what um, do you see as being the sort of key investment themes over the last 12 months in China and then more broadly Asia? Um, I think I think for China, I still really believe that that con consumption is 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 you know the core theme that yeah. uh, is, is really going to drive drive markets over over the midterm. And obviously, um, behind that is is something the government is trying to bring about that shift away from reliance on investment towards consumption. But even more important, I think, is just this general growth of the middle class. It's yeah. a, it's a natural process that will continue. So I think again, consumption. And then also, I think some of the technology trends, you're seeing the technology companies, you know, continue to grow really strongly. So again, some of the technology trends that we're seeing happening globally are actually happening faster in China. Um, so I think that's, you know, the, the, the core themes um, for China. Um, and I'd, I'd say for broader Asia as well. I mean, I think consumption is, is definitely, you know, a, 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 is a really significant, significant trend with lots of, lots of growth potential. You have good demographics across a lot of countries. So. Um, you know, I think that's that's an area that you can sort of really focus on. And it feels um, that there is an emerging middle class in, in many of these kind of Asian, Asian countries. And when you say consumption, are you talking about them buying things, education, health? What, yeah. what are the underlying themes? No, it's a, really, it's a really good point. So a lot of people, when you say consumption, we're thinking about products. And I think yeah. that's true. And you're seeing rising penetration across a, you know, a range of categories, whether it's autos, whether it's home appliances. And you see premiumization, you know, people wanting better products within those categories as well. But you know, you're absolutely right. Services, in many cases, is growing even faster. And as you say, education, travel. In fact, travel is if, is, is is quite an important theme for me yes. uh, in the trust. Um, and you can play it. You know, the, the, well, first of all, the trends have been very strong, uh, both domestically and overseas. Um, and I play it through, you know, a, a range of vehicles. Um, so I have Sea Trip. You know the biggest online travel portal, yeah. clearly benefiting from that. Um, hotels, I think, you know, we're at a very interesting point in uh, in uh, you know the development of of, of you know, the hotel sector, uh, and also through areas like the airports. Um, so you know, I have actually pretty significant exposure to the overall travel thematic. So I guess a lot of people would say, yeah, I understand. I probably maybe see quite a lot of Chinese tourists in the UK. Right. But it, it is broader around Asia, isn't it? I think there was a statistic out recently about the number of Vietnamese people who now sort of travel abroad. So this is not, you know, that particular theme of travel is not unique to China. No, I think that's true. Um, and you know, we've seen we've seen other countries go through this process. You know, remember when the Japanese, you know, when they sort of initially traveling and, and traveling strongly. But uh, you know, we'll see it across other countries, but really not to the scale of China. You know, you're looking at China already over 120 million, you know, overseas trips yeah. per year. And that continues to grow strongly. So, um, you know, when you look out five, ten years ahead, I think that's you know, in terms of overall scale, it's going to be it's going to be the Chinese that are going to be really most significant. Now we're talking in the middle of February, and sort of the month started with uh, what I would call a correction in sort of markets. Right. Um, certainly, a, probably a pullback from from the the, the long run. Um, what effect, if any, was there on on China and again the broader Asian markets? Well, clearly it had it had impact. You saw, you know, a pretty significant, you know, correction um, in China uh, and and the other markets as well. Um, and you know, we're going to have these periods of, of, of volatility. But what really drives markets over over the midterm is fundamentals. So as long as the companies, uh, you know, are at a reasonable valuation, and continue to execute growing earnings, uh, you know, that should get reflected in in stock prices stock prices over time. And, and, and it struck me if you went back a couple of years, you know, we had a correction in the Chinese market at the end of one summer not so long ago. That felt um, a lot harsher than, than the sort of um, the correction we're sort of talking about now. Right. Signals of maturity to me in, in the sort of Chinese equity markets. Would, would that be a view you'd hold? I think that's, I think that's partly true. Um, you know, you haven't seen the same, I, I guess, kind of panic that you saw in the market. You did have some companies, for example, suspending their stock, but really nothing like we saw in 2015. Um, I think you know the other aspect to that is 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 overall you know the fundamentals are strong and valuations are, are much more reasonable than the sort of levels, particularly in the A share market that we saw you know during that period in 2015. Now you mentioned the A share market. There's a there's a couple of ways that you as a professional investor can access sort of China. What what are the routes that you use? And again, 
with more broader Asian markets is all about direct investment in their local stock exchanges or do you use say some US or European listed businesses as well right well I'm focused on on you know companies that have you know businesses and exposure to China across all markets yeah. uh, so obviously that's through you know the ADRs you know the US listed companies yeah. it can be through other markets you know obviously Hong Kong is is main that's mm -hmm. where you know most of the uh, the eight shares are uh, but you know markets like Taiwan, Singapore, etc., have companies that, that have exposure as, as well. And then you have the A share market, where clearly things are opening up. Uh, Fidelity as a house, we have you know quite significant um, direct quota to invest directly in the market. Obviously, uh, you know we have the Stock Connect, uh, you know, for many investors, and that's the way they access you know the A share market. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a house, we have pretty significant um, direct quota, so that's generally the way that I invest um, in the A share market. And would you use any any, any unlisted um, uh, um, investments in, in any of the, the the vehicles that you run? Yeah, absolutely. The the you know the, one of the I think one of the really interesting aspects of uh, you know the Special Situations Trust is is that ability to invest in unlisted companies. Yeah. So uh, as you know, we took you know the capacity to to invest in unlisted companies from five to ten. 5% to 10% uh, recently. Uh, currently, I have about four holdings representing about 4% of, uh, of, of, of the trust. And um, again, in terms of getting access to you know, the activity uh, that's, that's you know, the, the corporate activity that's really happening on the ground in China, there's a great amount of entrepreneurial activity that's happening in companies that still haven't, haven't listed. So it's great that, that we have the capacity to, inv to get exposure to those, mm -hmm. those companies as well. Um, so you know, I do spend quite a bit of time looking at potential for for companies that that uh, are still at the private stage. Okay. Now it, it's often said, sort of Asia, China, probably include India these days, are, are higher risk investment markets for a sort of you know ordinary UK type investor. I mean, is is how how would you frame the risk? Yeah, I think I think it's fair to say that in general, you know, the more emerging markets, generally there is more volatility. Yeah. Um, but again, if you're if you're you know willing to take that long term view and you're investing in companies that that can really grow significantly over time, so it's about inv you know finding those those really good companies um, at the early stage that that can grow and execute. Uh, again, if you have that long term view, I think you know the the uh, the potential returns uh, more than compensate. And I guess risk is all about sort of at what point do you invest in any market? Right. You know, if you're in invested in the sort of you know y y main U.S. indices at the sort of back of um, 2017, you're at the sort of peak. They're quite fully valued right. then, so the risk is higher. And uh, I guess the same is true of Asian markets. Often, wh where's your entry point and what's your time horizon? Yeah, I think I think that's a good point. And you know, you, you touched on valuations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, clearly, most of the markets that I'm looking at in Asia are at much more attractive valuations than you find versus the U.S. So I do think, in many cases, again, as long as the companies can execute, you do have a greater margin of safety. Uh, as and again, as long as you're willing to take that sort of longer term view. Mm. And let's just lastly sort of talk about sort of time horizons again. I mean, um, you know, is, is Asia a market uh, for for a retired UK investor, perhaps with a sort of twenty year horizon, or should should I, as with children and grandchildren, be considering that uh, as an investment um, area for them? What, what do you say on the sort of time horizon? What period could I expect a reasonable return from 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 Asia? Well, again, you know, so looking out, I think you know, on a five to ten year view, uh, most of the economies in the region are, are, are going to grow pretty well versus most of the Western markets. Mm -hmm. If you talk about the economies. Uh, in general, and then as I as I said earlier, you're looking at a starting point in terms of valuation that, in many cases, is more attractive. So, um, I think you know if you can if you can take that five to ten year view, um, you know you're looking at some pretty attractive markets. So even a middle aged mo man like me should be investing Asia, and my my children and my grandchild should. I be think as well. absolutely. I mean, and you know, when you look at a market like China, it's if you think about you know China's you know its percentage of global GDP. Yeah relative to its share of global markets, you know, there's no question that that gap is going to close over time. We're talking about sort of mid-teens percentage of global GDP, you know, a sort of a low single digit percentage of global markets. Clearly that percentage is going to rise over time. You're going to have significant flows into China and obviously, you know, the inclusion of, of, of A shares into, you know, the MS MSCI, uh, well, China markets and, you know, broader markets as well is the beginning of that process. So you're only going to see 
and particularly China as a percentage of, of global markets, that percentage just increased over time. And just finally, it always strikes me as, an, as a private investor, I almost have to be invested in the second largest economy in the world. Right. That's the point I'm making. Yeah. So you think about you know percentage of global GDP, as you say, number two, on its way to being number one. Yeah. Um, it's 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 just natural that that's going to be a sort of a, a core part of of pe or should be a core part of people's you know investment portfolios when you look out you know over the midterm. Well, you've sold it to me anyway, <laughs> Dale. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lance.